Hello. We are on limits and continuity day three. I said that we would have a couple more examples today, so we got just a couple more ideas here. So we'll get right to it. We're pretty much going to warm up with a problem very similar to the one we did last time. It says give a formula for the extended function that is continuous at x equals negative 3 if the original function is x squared minus 9 all over x plus 3. So here's the issue. If I plug in this value to this function, f of negative 3, I get negative 3 squared minus 9 over negative 3 plus 3, I get 0 over 0. Which remember, if we are thinking of this as a limit, is technically the do more work. Right? When they have 0 over 0, they're saying to do more work. So what do I have to do? In this case, I need to factor. Specifically, x squared minus 9 factors into x plus 3, x minus 3, and we're still all over x plus 3. Because I have a common factor, I can cancel it out, and now I can take the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x minus 3, which would be negative 6. Why does this help us? I think I'm going to sneeze, so I'm going to pause the video. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm okay. <laughs> we took the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this function. We got x equals negative 6. Again, why did this help us? This helps us build that extended function. What do they mean by extended function? Basically, they mean the piecewise version, which does not have a whole. So I'm going to group this, make it a little smaller, put it down here. Now I'm going to give that extended function. So g of x is equal to, it's going to be two pieces. It's going to be that same original thing, x squared minus 9 over x plus 3, if x is not equal to negative 3. I'm basically going to be in this curve everywhere but through negative 3. And then I'm going to be, well, remember we said the limit was negative 6. So I'm going to be negative 6 if x is equal to negative 3. This definition gives me a continuous function everywhere on its domain. All right, a couple more example problems. What about something like this? It says the function f of x is defined as follows. Find a value of k that makes the function continuous. Well, let's start by talking about what this function is. In fact, we're going to draw a picture. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to start by graphing the one that I know. I am going to be the line x plus 3. y equals x plus 3 when I am between 1 and 5. 1 and 5. So I'm going to start by just graphing that x plus 3. So 1, 2, 3, y-intercept, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I look like this line. Not perfect. That's okay. But I really only want it between 1 and 5. Specifically, I am going to include 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I am going to put an open circle at 5 because it is not equal to it. I'm going to keep that piece of the line. I'm going to erase the purple part because we technically don't need that anymore. That part of the equation is not changing. Notice it has no variables. It has an x, but it does not have a variable k. Find the value of k. So really, it's this top one that I'm not sure of. What does the line kx look like? Well, it's a line that has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of we don't know. So this line is going to look something like that, and I am adjusting the slope. So it could be like this, but this line doesn't make sense because the goal is to make this continuous. I want it to meet up with that orange piece. So if my slope is crazy like that, those don't connect. I want my slope to look something 
let's get it. Something like this. This is my goal. This is what I want my line of kx to look like. Well, how can I make this happen? I know they have to intersect right here at this point. And if I'm looking at my graph, you might be able to tell what the slope is, but what if you didn't draw this graph? How could we do this? Well, we want this point right here to be where they intersect, meaning we want the x and y values, let me try that again, x and y values to be the same. I know the x value I want, specifically, it's this one. The y values being the same would mean I set these pieces equal to each other. Kx is equal to x plus 3 at x equals 1. Why? Because this is y equals kx, and this is y equals x plus 3. So I set up this equation, and I solve. I'm going to make that a little lower. Set it up. Now I can plug in my x equals 1. So I really have k is equal to 1 plus 3. k is equal to 4. And that is it. And hopefully this makes sense with our picture. I would agree that this slope looks like a slope of 4. So my k value, sorry, that's not a very good 4, is a 4 there. Well, let's try this again with a maybe more challenging example. What about a function that looks like this? It says, our function is defined as follows. Find a value of k that makes the function continuous. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing. We need our x and y values the same. So we start to make the y values the same by setting these equations equal to each other. e to the kx is equal to x plus 2. Specifically, where do we want this to happen? Where they meet at x equals 2. So I can continue by plugging in 2. So I have e to the 2k is equal to 2 plus 2. And now I solve. Now there's a lot of ways you can solve this. I'm going to start by at least simplifying. e to the 2k is equal to 4. It's in exponential. I need it to be, to solve this, in logarithmic. We've done this before. You can either consider it as the swirl, or you can think about taking the natural log of both sides. If we do that on the left here, all I'm going to be left with is 2k. On the right, I will have the natural log of 4. And then we solve k is equal to the natural log of 4 all over 2. And while this is technically 100% true, we can actually simplify this. So let's consider what this would be. Really, I have 1 half times the natural log of 4. How did I do that? Well, it's really natural log of 4 all divided by 2. So we pulled out this fraction here, 1 over 2, basically. Anyway, if we move using our properties of logs, any coefficient can become an exponent. So this is really the natural log of 4 to the 1 half. Anything to the 1 half is really the square root. And so actually I have the natural log of 2 as my final, most simplified solution here. All right, we got one more idea in this section, and it's something known as the intermediate value theorem. I'm going to show you what it is, and then potentially later give you a couple examples to work on, but for right now, I'm going to write out the definition and then draw a picture. So the intermediate value theorem says, if a function y is a function of x, and it is a continuous, function on an interval from a to b. If y equals f of x is a continuous function on an interval from a to b, then f of x, or the y values, take every value from or between f of a and f 
of B. Okay, that sounds like a lot. I'm going to sketch out a picture for you and then tell you why we would use this. So let's say I have a function. Specifically, let's draw my function like this. This is f of x. The first piece of information we are told is it is continuous on an interval from a to b. Okay, I agree. This is a. Let's say this is b. This function is continuous from a to b. What they are saying is I am going to also have, here's f of a, here is f of b. I have all these x values of this function, right? We have x, 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 x. But then I also, in this function, have all of these y values. That's really all this is saying. But why WHY? Is this helpful? Well, one of the biggest things that we can use the intermediate value theorem for is to prove a function has a zero. Why would we be able to do this? Well, let's say I have a curve that looks like this. And maybe this is A and this is B. So that means f of a is down here, f of a. It is a negative number. And here's b, which means this up here is f of b. It is a positive number. Because of the intermediate value theorem, if I know one of my y's is negative, and I know another one of my y's is positive, and I know I have to have every value in between. Well, what's the number between a positive and a negative number? Zero. It does not tell us where the zero is. It just proves that there is a zero on this interval. All right, finish your continuity worksheet, and I will talk to you soon.